Greetings everyone, here is Yamika. Here we go again, as promised, with the second speed paint dedicated to Balthazar, our favorite blood hunter. If for some reason this video is the very first one you're watching on my channel, allow me to recap the situation here. So I am Yamika, artist, improviser, and last but not least, GM for a homebrew D&D campaign. Recently, I decided to redesign all my players' characters as they just hit level 8 and entered the third and maybe final act of the campaign. If you missed the first redesign or even the original presentation video, I'll invite you to click on the link above and give it a look. Okay, so now back to Balthazar. As you can see, I did not start the recording before the shading process as, similarly to the last video, I mostly traced the sketch I've drawn in my sketchbook in order to have my line art. Then I blocked in the character in a grey toned color before blocking the lights with a reddish and bluish tint. Here you can see me beginning the shading process. It is similar to, even though I kind of learned from my previous attempt with Lizara and tried to be more efficient with my shadows. I started with the boldest shadows, painting in a multiplied layer, the biggest shadows following a process posted by Little D Chan on Instagram, I believe. So far, there's not much of a painterly look to it. Um, but at that point, I am switching to a small airbrush and shading areas where light would be blocked by volume, such as the front leg, the inner arm, the reflection on the sword, for instance. After that, I'll do the same with a bigger airbrush for bigger areas, such as the general leg area. In the end, I'll use a white airbrush to work on the contrast where the light hits, and thus improving the 3D illusion. The final shading step consists of using a soft marker brush and retracing lines and little details to create what are called local shadows. This type of shadows are entirely created by the items themselves against each other and are most of the time kind of independent from the light sources themselves. Obviously there is a sort of relationship, everything is connected, but it's easier to think of it uh, independently.
And then, the funnest part, the coloring part through gradient maps. Use just one gradient map for each item or different color and it automatically applies your desired colors to the hues and values you've just drawn. So that's why uh, having a good shaded art grayscale is very important if you want to use gradient maps, otherwise your gradient map will just be kind of blunt and not very contrasty, not very interesting. So if you want to use gradient maps it's very easy but you need to really focus on your shading process. Okay, so now we have some time before us, so let's talk a bit about the character. You may already know him, but Balthazar is an elf orc, blood hunter, which is a special D&D class, clearly inspired by the Witcher. He comes from a secret society called the Order composed by members who dedicate their lives to fight the monstrous threats to human societies. Most of them are lonely and only take one apprentice to perpetuate the tradition and Balthazar was one of them. He learned how to use his blood to change depending on his enemy becoming sometimes fire resistant or faster or even stronger, bulkier, whatever he wants. For that, he still needs to create some special chemicals, some special potions in order to change his blood. So he's a, he's a chemist at heart, a very nerdy chemist by the way. <laughs> If most of the first arc of the campaign have been focused on Lizera, and the second one have been mostly Ayla's discovery of her own powers and limitation and finding, finally finding her girlfriend, this third arc seems to be Balthazar's time to shine. Indeed, the man has protected a mysterious book given by his master, the Codex against unknown forces that try to take it back to uncover its secrets. As Balthazar is translating it, he discovered how it unravels dark secrets of the Confederation, the country he came from, concerning the Dark Heart, a religious entity who raises undead in order to help and serve the livings, as the country has most has mostly lost all of its population due to war, famine and disease. Well, <laughs> you know the deal. And so, the circle finally decided to go in that country, which, which, which makes me very hyped and I can't wait for them to discover more of that plot. <laughs> they already met the, the master of Balthazar, uh, Loroman, and they also met his well, let's say, his, uh, the, the adoptive daughter of his master, <laughs> called Melinoe, and she, she's, she's such, <laughs> she's so wild, that's so funny to see her interact with Balthazar. Personality-wise, he's probably the most nerdy and withdrawn me member of the circle. And for a very long time, he had troubles to connect with some of them. Recently though, they went to a small village where a young girl has been murdered and they were searching for the culprit. 
Balthazar had a very interesting moment where he was alone, hidden in a closet, while the murderer was furiously searching for a weapon to cover his tracks. Even if he remained silent, the player later told me that Balthazar was very close to brutally attack and kill the man, as the young girl who was killed reminded him of his own lost daughter and also his lost wife. And at that point, the character started to carve a little wooden sculpture of his lost family to explain everything to the circle who did not know anything at that point, even though it was quite gruesome. And let me tell you, when he finally did, and Lisa and I related to him, it was a hell of a relief. <laughs> Everyone was so shocked to learn that he was once a father and kept the secret for so long while Lizara also was a father grieving his lost family and kind of, well, shared it way faster than Balthazar did. And then Lizara kind of asked Balthazar to help him kill Rani's father and they both commonly agreed to work on that plan as perfectly sane and balanced fathers to their adoptive murderous children can be but you know that's 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 D D for you you, you that's that's just D. <laughs> In the end, I am quite satisfied with the result of this design. I managed to make him look a little bit older and more confident too, in order to remind everyone he is a worry fighter before being a nerd. The codex appears on his leg, as you can see it, and he's sporting the imperial uh, red and purple armor of the circle gifted him for his birthday, while he kept in his back the sword of a former enemy they defeated on the way. Even if I dare say he's still quite similar to his previous design, this is mostly voluntary and it's still an improvement. I wanted to keep his square-ish appearance and solid posture as it intuitively informs you about his stability and th strength. It gives the character a, a certain vibe, a certain energy, and the power of forms in character design is as important as the power of color theory sometimes. Talking about the color, I also wanted something quite um, neutralized in tone, similar in tone, with a very brownish, neutral, natural, earthy tones and some red to remind of the blood and to contrast with his green skin. So, yeah, it looks nice. L lots of vials, lots of potions, be because, well, you know, he's a chemist, he, that's what he does. And what do you think of it?
Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!